Welcome to the fifth loop tutorial. Today's demonstration is rather technical and will only be of value to people interested in how to make reliable loop dictionaries. I'll talk briefly about reliability, the computing of Kronbach alphas, and demonstrate the construction of psychometrically trustworthy scales. All right, you've been warned. All right, words reflect people's psychological states. This includes both what they're thinking about and the content of their thought, and also the ways they think, their thinking styles. Now I have some friends who seem to think about money all the time. If I were going to come up with a way to measure money-mindedness or money focus, how would I go about, how would I go about doing that? There are several ways. We could make a questionnaire, track spending patterns, or look at language. But let's start with the most common questionnaires. Now here's a simple eight-item questionnaire that I just made up. So are these good questions? Do all of them really get at the idea of money focus? Imagine 200 people complete the questionnaire, and here is the spreadsheet that we get from this. Now, if you look at this, person one scored a four on the first question, a three on the second question, and so forth. And I'll next correlate the eight questions with each other. I'm doing this because a reliable scale is one where all the items are measuring the same general concept. We hope that each item is correlated with the others, and as you can see, they are. Although these correlations are made up for this demonstration, they're similar to what we typically find. So how do we interpret the correlations? Our ability to understand the quality of a scale depends on two things, the number of items on the scale, in this case eight, and the average correlations. And it turns out there's a solid metric to evaluate the reliability of measures, and it's called Kronbach's alpha. And it's useful to get a sense of how it works. Two notations you need to know. K refers to the number of items used to judge the concept, and mean correlation, which is represented by the letter R with a bar on top. The equation for Kronbach's alpha is K times mean correlation divided by one plus K minus one times mean correlation. Stop this video and ponder what this formula means. Now let's get back to the correlation matrix for money focus. The mean correlation is 0.22 and the number of items is 8. Okay, back to the formula. 8 times 0.22 divided by 1 plus 8 minus 1, that's 7 times 0.22, that equals 1.76 divided by 1 plus 1.54, that's 2.54, 1.76, blah, 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 it's 0 0.69. Ta-da! 0.69. So what does this mean? It's actually important. It says that all of the items are measuring the same thing. But more valuable is we know that an alpha between 0.6 and 0.8 is ideal. It's not too high where you have redundant items, and it's not too low where you might not be measuring a single concept. How do we think about reliability with language? Does it work the same way? Yes, indeed. I'm sitting a completely made up person writes, I'm sitting here in my office wondering how I can get new running shoes. All I need is more money. I love money. I love people who are rich. Sounds like someone high in money focus. If we just counted the words, we see some evidence for this. But how do we do this reliably? In tutorial four, you learned about making a Luke dictionary. Words that reflect money focus might include cash, money, buy, sell, etc. With this spur of the moment list, Let's make a money dictionary. We start with a percent sign in the header, and we will make our total word focus dictionary, another percentage sign, then enter the words we're looking for. Okay, copy and paste those. Okay, there we go. Whoa, whoa, but wait. Let's rethink this. Why not make every word we're interested in a separate loop category? In other words, we can see how frequently each word in our new dictionary is used. Wait, did you see what just happened? I jumped from a traditional loop dictionary with a single category variable in the header, tote money, to this. I've now transformed the header to include all the target words so that they are their own dictionaries. This means that in the Luke output, we can see how frequently each of these individual words are used. You can think of this as analyzing separate survey items on a questionnaire. Now, where was I? 
Okay, and as a side note, see how some of the search words like buy and sell have asterisks? This means any word that starts with buy, including buyer or buys, will be caught under the word buy. Okay, now we'll save the dictionary as a text file. Okay, as a text file, yes, yes, tab delimited. And once we do that, you'll see I'll eventually rename it. And most important in my renaming, I'm going to change this txt suffix to a dot dic suffix so that Luke can see and use it as his own dictionary. And now we're ready for action. We have an official Luke dictionary. We go into Luke and load our new dictionary. Get, in a, get an alert about this. That's okay. Go to the categories menu to be sure everything looks fine and block punctuation. That's my personal bias. And you see the money words at the bottom. Okay, so you'll eventually click Analyze Text, and I'm going to click text in a folder I have of about 400 blogs from another study of people writing about every topic under the sun. And voila, Luke has analyzed them. Now I'm going to cheat and skip ahead and show you the Luke results within SPSS, but you could actually do this in R or Strata or Excel. I'm using SPSS because I want to run a reliability program that includes Cronbach's Alpha. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll go up, I'll click Analyze, then Scale, then Reliability Analysis. And these are the words I'm going to be using. And click on Statistics. I like basic descriptives and the basic summaries. Click OK, and here's the output. Now let's first look at the reliability st statistics. You see that the standardized Kronbach is 0.44. This is a bit low and tells me that I spent a little, if I spent a little longer finding more money relevant words, I could easily boost the numbers up. I also want you to look at the actual means. They are quite different. You'll see the word money, for example, is used more than any other word, whereas the word wealth is hardly used at all. Always pay attention to what words are likely driving your output. In this case, money is doing all the work. Now check out the mean inter-item correlations. Remember the R mean we saw earlier? With these data, you, you'll see that it, our mean was only 0.05, but in the earlier example, it was 0.22. This is problematic. It says that the words that, that I have are not highly intercorrelated. Now what we're going to do is move back again and now look at the item total statistics and focus on that last column. Kronbach alpha is the item it deleted. Look at the word money. If we threw it out, the overall alpha would drop to 0.22. If we got w rid of words like rich, cheap, or broke, the alpha would actually go up. In other words, we can use this output to begin to build a better money focus scale. I'd like to say that's all you need to know about reliability when it comes to word count. Sadly, I can't. This has been a shamelessly quick and superficial overview of the topic, so let me add a few caveats. First, Kronbach alphas for language variables are often quite low, sometimes in the 0.3 to 0.6 range. This is partially the nature of language. I may be obsessed with money, but rarely use money words. Instead, I might constantly comment on the on people's brands or the shoes they're wearing or the stores they shop in. Second, reliability can be assessed in multiple ways. The original Luke dictionaries relied on inner judge reliability. For example, when we developed the sadness dictionary, we initially had students generate as many words related to sadness as they could. We then made a giant list of all the words and had separate groups of at least three judges rate each one in a binary fashion. Is this a sadness-related word, yes or no? Those words that all three judges checked yes remained. If two or more of the judges said no, it was removed. If only one said no, the judges would talk and come to a consensus. One warning, however, inter-judge reliability is dependent on the culture and demographic of your judges. The original Luke ratings were made by upper middle class college students in 1993 and there have been some significant cultural and linguistic shifts since then. A third approach to word selection and reliability is to automate it. 
In a later Luke tutorial, Ryan Boyd will introduce a computer program called WELP, which uses a word embedding method drawn from computer science. The idea is that you can give the program a group of seed words, for example, Obama, so too for State of the Union, deliver, and then the program searches large banks of previously collected texts and finds other words that are mathematically similar. So for example, across millions of texts, the word so to tends to hang around words such as speech and deliver. Using an approach like this, we can actually begin to create dictionaries that are mathematically trustworthy and can be created in other labs across different times and cultures, as long as the seed words mean roughly the same things. Finally, don't lose sight of the big picture. The goal of making dictionaries is to capture topics or ways of thinking that can be revealed in the ways people write or talk. This is not a perfect science. So make your dictionary. Run it on your text files. Then go into some of the actual text files and see if the dimensions you saw with your dictionaries are apparent in the actual texts. Okay, I hereby certify you as a junior grade dictionary expert. Here's your merit badge. Now go out and make the world a better place. See you next time.